Hi, today I have a 6.0 that's a long crank when cold. First thing I do is I check the oil and the history. If the oil is good, um, if it's full and it's been done, it hasn't been over 5,000 miles, no issues with it, I move on. This one, the oil checked out good. Next thing I do is I hook up some way to monitor my Fickham sink, my Fickham M power, my ICP voltage, and my IPR. The reason why I wanted to check this, now I'll turn the key on and off and check my Fickham M power. So let me cycle the keys. You can hear the injector pre-clatter going on and the voltage is staying up pretty good. So I'm going to right now not pay attention to the Fickham. And we want to look at ICP voltage, key on, engine off. And it's about a quarter of a volt, which that's what we expect at 0.24. That, that's good anywhere 0 0.18, 0 0.26 is normal. So now that I've verified that my CP sensor is not biased, next thing I want to do now before I even crank it, because it's very important that it's set overnight and before I cranked it, I want to pull out the ICP sensor and see if that oil rail is low. So let's go out and pull that ICP sensor off and check that. Now the passenger side, that one's real easy because we have a, the ICP sensors right here. We can get to it here externally and we can check this oil rail. If the oil rail is low, then we suspect a leak in this side. If the oil rail is up, then we still want to monitor the, uh, all the other sensors while we put it in. So let's go ahead and pull this sensor out and see what we get. Okay, we want the oil to be right there at the top of the at the top of the oil rail and it's not so it's down so this side right here that's going to be most likely our cause for the uh, the long crank when cold let me go ahead and put this back in and show you what I'm talking about with the IDS okay I'm back inside here and now of course we do want to check glow plugs and all that kind of stuff but mainly what I want to focus on is the ones that you've already checked out and it's kind of maybe you got an issue still going on you're trying to look for some help here so I'm trying to do so now I'm going to go ahead and crank it and one thing I want you to keep in mind is the injectors are not commanded on until they see 500 PSI so with that oil rail being low it's definitely going to have a longer crank because now the high pressure pump has to fill that oil rail up let a little bit of the air purge until it can hit that 500 psi so I'm going to go ahead and crank it and let's watch your response in the time okay you notice the long crank and how the ICP had to build and also this time we're going to check the pick and voltage so we don't want to miss something sell a customer a problem and Still have to call back. Okay, with the long crank cold and removing the ICP, finding that this oil rail, fuel rail, however you want to look at it and call it, with it being low here, we're going to go ahead and remove this valve cover. Now just remember a few things. One, this has not been cranked or started in a few days, and it's a long crank or hard start cold with confirmed ICP pressure takes a long time to build. It also has to be an 04 and up model to have the ICP sensor up here. The 03, early 04, the ICP sensor is in back and it still can have the same issues as far as uh, the oil rail being down. The oil rail is a different design so we have other things to look at which I'll try to cover in another video. But this one, we want to go ahead and do this. And, and also, if this side was not down, we would remo remove the valve cover on the driver's side and check it. I'm going to go ahead and pull this valve cover off and show you what to look for on this side. Or both sides, either one. Remove the wire loom. 
give you better access. I remove it as an assembly over here, disconnect the positive here off the battery and pull it all out of the way. And then remove the bracket for the uh, glow plug module off as an assembly too. Remove the glow plug harness, un disconnect it up here, pull it out of the way. Then remove the bracket. Remove the dipstick bolt if it has an automatic transmission. Remove the valve cover bolts. And I'm just using, on this time I'm using a Milwaukee 3H drive, 3H drive extension, and the snap on half deep, either 10 or 12, depending on if it's the nuts or if it's the bolts holding the valve covers on. And I got a, another video showing this on the injectors if you want to see it in a little more detail. But the ones underneath here, I use the uh, a 12 millimeter ratchet, which I'll show in a second. Let's go ahead and remove the bolts on the valve cover. Now to get the bottom two bolts on this valve cover, I use just a 12 millimeter flex ratchet that locks in place, the ratcheting type. You can just use the box end of a wrench if you want. Now I'll reach underneath here and get up on top of the bolts and then get them out. It's the easiest way I know of to get to them. So I remove these last two bolts and lift the valve cover off. Okay, now with the valve cover off, you can see here the, the fuel rail. Ford calls it a fuel rail because the oil pushes the fuel in. Most people call it an oil rail. But anyhow, you can see the rail here. And these are what we call dummy plugs. They, they're the most common thing to go bad. The 10 millimeter takes a 10 millimeter Allen. That's the old style. The updated one's a 12 millimeter. So this one here has the old style. But the main thing that people overlook for a long crank when cold is this plug right here. There's an O-ring on it, sometimes it comes loose. Do not forget to check this. And also, it's even though it's rare, the standpipe. So make sure you check the O-rings in your standpipe. By far, the most common is gonna be the dummy plug. Then I do get a couple of these a year. And then the standpipe, maybe the same thing, one or two a year. And I know people are out there resealing their nipples where they go down the injectors underneath here. I've never had those go bad yet, but other people must be in different climates having them go bad. So I guess check those. And of course your injector seals, but usually that gives you a drivability issue or no start when hot. So these are just different things to look for, the seals around the injectors. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out this dummy plug and probably find it there and check and see what we have. Okay, a couple things. One, you can see the oil line here, where it was at, so that's, that, that shows that it was low. And also we're looking for, there we go, here it is. We're looking for a place to where the seals went bad. Wipe it off here and show you better. Okay, that's a good side as we bring it around so you can see there where it was failing now the updated design which I'll show here in a second has an improvement so it doesn't get the force and the wear 
So we're going to go ahead and update these on both sides. Okay, here's the old and the new dummy plug side by side. This is the old style, the one that went bad here. And there's the bad part again. And it has a 10 millimeter Allen that it takes to remove it. And here's the new one with its 12 millimeter. And also, you can see here where it has the nylon rings to help seal and uh, reinforce the um, the rubber there from failing it prematurely. I have these have been out years and have not had them fail. And you can identify them again easily by the 12 millimeter. And there's the part number if needed. So I'm going to go ahead and install these and check the other ones. Make sure because I don't want to do it twice. So make sure we check these. And also, please, because I get a every now and then I get people calling up saying that they've done the dummy plugs and it's still there air leak it when you're not sure remember the seals around the injectors but also what I see overlooked the most is just this little plug here and the, the o-ring in there try to loosen it and if you're not sure or if it's a comeback or you're doing it again pull it out and check the o-ring same way with the standpipe if you're doing a, a van or you know something that you don't want to do twice should be everything but if it's something that you really don't want to do twice make sure you take your um, your standpipe out and check those seals they're rare but I have had a couple of them so now one of these uh, if you follow this you should be able to find out your problem and concern and fix it thank you